Chapter 60 to 62. Kale woke up with sweat dripping down her forehead. Last night was so crazy that she was wondering if it was all a dream. From what she could remember, she woke up in the middle of the night feeling quite sore, and after getting up to get water, she was whisked by Kalifla into bed with her and Goku. Her head hurt, and she got out of bed earlier than the rest. She went out to the backyard to really think about what happened, and what was the next move. I didn't help that she didn't remember anything before that got her into that mess. However, she didn't sneak quietly enough, and someone overheard her walking away. Joining her in the backyard, he leaned against the wall of the compound until she spoke. What happened yesterday? I'm so confused. Yesterday as in last night or during the day. Because if you want I can go into detail about last night. No. I meant during the day. My memory is so foggy. Well, from what I heard, you kinda went berserk when you saw Kaelfla and Vegeta fall. Not only did you push Cell and 21 back, but you also had them running for their lives. You even attacked some of the others during it as well, including me. Oh sorry, Goku wanted to tease her more, but he could tell she is really distressed and confused. Don't worry about it. If you really want to apologize to someone, buy 18 some new clothes or something. If you don't in a couple of hours, don't blame me if some of your stuff goes missing. Heh. There was a comfortable silence after that. The most comfortable that the two ever had. They never really talked together by themselves. Usually one of the girls or kids was also in the room with them, making it less awkward. While they bonded with everyone else in the house, they themselves never really bonded until last night that is. After a while, Goku broke the silence and started talking about random stuff. It went from small talk to talking about one thing that they had in common. You knew I had a crush on Cauliflower, And you basically told everyone when you told Cauliflower to say that? Oh please, everyone knew you had a crush on her. You weren't really hiding it well. Cauliflower was a nice topic to dangle on, until they circled back to her enraged rampage. What do you think this is? I, I don't feel normal. I'm pretty sure I know what you are going through, uh, just a hunch. Don't scream when you find out okay. Such a nice talk came to an end when Goku brought out the thick Scion book. It was a great tool for literally the entire Scion population besides himself. The Scion book? What about it? I already read the important bits. You read the bits that you thought were important. Look over here, on the last chapter. Kale leaned in, where it was talking about other transformations. Goku delved deeper into the chapter and pointed at the particular special case that he was looking for. Legendary Super Scion. Read that. She had an extreme foreboding sensation swell up inside her chest. Gulping down a swab of saliva, she read in the depth all that the Dragon Shinron knew about the Legendary Super Scion. Much is unknown about the Legendary Super Scion, but one noticeable thing about this Scion is its uncontrollable rage and legendary potential. Just the introduction got her hooked. The more she read, the more she understood of herself, and what she was going to become. R, are you saying that I am a legendary super scion? But that would mean, an oh, I can't be. Kale started to hyperventilate. Goku patted her back and told her to calm down. Hey dingus, I told you not you freak out. Calm down, and let me tell you how you can overcome your own genes. It took a while indeed, but she eventually calmed down and turned quiet. Goku, the most capable person she has ever met, even more than Cauliflower, told her that there is a way. She had to listen. Well, the information in the book is murky at best, only bits and pieces from thousands of years ago. It is stating what is known, and even that may not be true. The first way and guaranteed way to fix your special body is to wish for something from Shinran. From what I heard, Dend and Kami upgraded him, so it should work. The other way is to walk the path not trekked, and be the first to control it. The book says uncontrollable. Just because no one has controlled it before doesn't mean it is uncontrollable. You will eventually implode with endless power and die. Maybe those before you just didn't have a strong enough body. Either way, it is your choice. My choice. It's a choice of life or struggling to survive. What would Cauliflower say to do? Kale whispered to herself while thinking about it. Probably something like, train. Don't be a coward. You can overcome it, Kale. I believe in you. Humph. I can't rise to an expectation like that. Goku chuckled a bit at Kale, even with a life or death choice before her, still thinks about Cauliflower. Maybe you don't know Cauliflower after all. What? Or maybe you don't understand how important you are to her. Do you really think she will throw Scion Pride bullsh asterisk T at you like Vegeta? She cares a lot about you. She would probably tell you to do it at first. But if it doesn't work out, she might even do the wish for you. This got Kale thinking. Does Cauliflower care that much about me? Don't think about Cauliflower for one second. What do you want to do? Well, Goku smiled. She was actually considering her choices more in depth. He could tell that Cauliflower wasn't as big of a factor in her decision, just from the constant mumbling. You. You didn't have a clear path ahead of you, did you? You might have had the book, but that was like a saying there is a heaven, not how to get there. You basically achieved Super Scion by yourself, and now are teaching us. E. She's gone quiet once again. Walking down the path blind, 
while leaving torches behind for everyone else? Truly, if he didn't know anything about DBZ, he would be fumbling about just how to survive being a monkey boy. Well, she will believe what she wants to. What she doesn't know about won't harm her. I will. I will do this myself. I won't cower and control my rage. And I will be the first and help the people after learn too. Yes, the look of determination on her face was classified as cute and fierce. Maybe it will. Just maybe. All right. I think first you need to learn to control your ape form. That is a step in the right direction. You know, Goku, you are a lot better and cooler than I thought. Uh, thanks. Goku. Their special moment got interrupted by Bulma's voice coming down from the lab. In it had a mix of excitement that was signature whenever something tech happened. 16's programming is done. I can wake him up now if you want. Bulma told Goku and Kale as they entered the lab. Bulma woke up just to come straight down here and see how that decoding was coming along. It actually went smoother than she thought, and she was able to revert 16 back to how he was before. Excluding the initiative to kill Goku, of course. Yeah, let's boot him up, and maybe we can get some information on Cell and 21. Sure. Wake him up without my permission, and without 18 being here. The sarcastic voice in the corner reminded him that 17 was here all night. Such an overprotective dad. Kale, can you get 18 over here? She should be in one of the spare rooms, sleeping in a bed like a normal person. Did I just hear you correctly? Seventeen looked at Goku with dead eyes, as usual, while Goku didn't even turn in his direction. Tell her we are about to turn on Sixteen. Are you all ready? The lab was fairly spacious with Seventeen, Eighteen, Goku, and Bulma surrounding Sixteen. Kale, after sending Eighteen downstairs, went to talk to Caulifla about her future after finding out she woke up. This better be good to warrant Sixteen's reprogramming. Oh, shut your complaining, Seventeen. Bulma said that Twenty-One did something to her. I trust her. You are getting too comfortable with the people here, Eighteen. It's concerning. You are just jealous that I've made new friends, while all you have done is been sleeping in the basement. Tisk, let's get this over with. All right, let's do this. Bulma was more than ready to see the product of her own work. After pressing the button that initiates the program, she stepped back to give Sixteen some room. After a few moments, Sixteen eyes opened violently. Streams of data were scrolling through his eyes, as if they were one of the few monitors in the lab. An extended amount of text went by before it came to a stop and Android 16 was fully rebooted. Awake with a new brain in the metaphorical sense, he sat up and looked around. Computing accessing memory, establishing initiative. Hello, Goku, Bulma, Android 17, Android 18. It seems as if you reprogrammed me. I do not hear 21's presence inside my head anymore. Correct Amundo. Goku was hoping that after restoring you to your previous version, that you wouldn't be so hostile to us and maybe even help us stop 21. Android 16 smiled. It was as if Goku knew how he was before. Indeed, Android 21 added extra code that made me obedient to her. It was unpleasant, but she didn't change me massively. Android 16, we need to find and stop 21 before she does any more harm. You were with her even before she activated 17 and 18. What can you tell us about her? 16 looked at Goku's eyes for a second, searching, searching for something within them. No horrible man would be loved by so many. Before I give you the information, I need you to promise something, son Goku. Help me save her. Help you how? I don't know. Ah, this is wonderful. Android 21 was sitting next to another version of the key container that Goku sieged in the previous lab. Her tail was in one of the holes that connected to the yellow substance that was key. Her power was increasing steadily, her base limit higher than ever before. That was enough for now. If I take too much food, the batteries will die before they can recharge. Such cruelty to those poor humans. Using them just for power, you are the same as you were back then. Shut up your thoughts are inconsequential. You should just disappear for good and get out of my head. I will never leave. Although you have all the power right now, I will find a way out. Eventually. You will never escape the insides of my mind. That is where you will live forever, and it is your fault for being too weak. On the outside, it just looked like Android 21 was closing her eyes thinking in her head. But unveiling the curtains to look inside, we see two 21s looking at each other conversing. One with red pupils and black eyes, similar to the one who sees the rays of the sun. And another, with white eyes and blue pupils, one that lives in the shadows. Two sides of her mind, split long ago, one good and one evil. Yet although they are both her, one holds all the power. The good 21 didn't speak anymore. She had nothing more to say. Of course, she wouldn't seek power at the expenditure of other living beings. She wasn't a monster. But because of it, she released a monster to harm everyone anyway. 21's eyes opened because of a sound from the room over. The big clank could wake up anyone within a mile radius. Luckily, no one was nearby. Looking over, Cell was messing with a strange device. Standing on five legs, it looked like a virus with how it was shaped. 
clear glass on top with a seat inside. The machine was finished off with multiple rockets on the sides of it. What are you doing? Don't touch that. What? You seem awfully protective and emphasize its importance, yet we don't use it. What is it? Cell was getting bored and quite irritated. Hold up inside of this godforsaken base. Wasn't fit for such a superior being such as himself. 21's eyes glowed with anger at the sight of Cell touching that machine. It's the source of all my information, how I got here, and if I need to leave. You are saying Android 21 is from the future? Everyone was shocked by what they were hearing. Even Goku. B, but how is that possible? Time travel should theoretically be impossible. Bulma maddened with the idea of such lucrative technology denied all claims. I am model after her son, so she did not hold back in letting loose her feelings and venting her frustrations. She said it didn't matter anyway because by the time anyone figured out, it wouldn't be of use. Tell us more. Anything useful she let out to you. She said she has another side to her. A weaker side that is on the verge of breaking out. Especially after what she experiences in the future. She retold the story of how they had everyone beat her. Even her other self sided with the opposition. However, before they can finish it, she completed her side project after stealing Bulma's notes and escaped with a time machine that she capsuled. Strangely enough, forces of the world recombined the two 21s before the departure trapping the other 21 inside the current one. So you are saying that there are two 21s and you want us to free the good one? Yes. That's right you by asterisk ch. You ain't smarter than me. You stole my notes. I was the one who had the blueprints for a time machine. But you don't know how to do it? Yes. Interesting. My biggest question was, why didn't the future us send reinforcements? They as per usual ignored Bulma and her happiness. Asking to separate the 21s is a huge task. Even if Goku learned the force spirit fission from Yardrat, that was to separate two beings. He didn't know how it would work with two entities that were originally one and the same. Anyways, the crux of the matter is the longer we wait, the stronger they get. I have a plan and the power to defeat them, but I don't know how long that will last with their current increase in power. 16. Do you know where they are? Affirmative. They are in the Northern Plains at an abandoned RR Army lab. Even if they assume the worst and know that I turned on them, they would still need a large amount of time to remove and transport the energy extractor that they use on the humans. We should go now to intercept them. Goku nodded. He put on some fighting gear in a second and was ready to head out. We are coming too. We are. Of course we are. You wouldn't want to miss out on the fun, would you? It was decided by 17 that they wouldn't want to miss out on the Android family reunion. Good thing there were only five, any more would be redundant. All right, let's go. 16, you are coming too. Wait, are you going to take Cauliflower as well? I'm sure she would ready and pumped to use her new power. Or even the kids. Bulma had to intervene at the last second. I would hate to say it, but Cauliflower and the kids aren't powerful enough. The only reason why I don't mind the androids coming is that they would come even if I told them not to. Besides, Kale needs Cauliflower's support right now, and we shouldn't ruin it. Fine, she won't be too happy when you tell her your exact words. She would understand and only want to get stronger. With that, the four figures took off to the sky towards the base that 16 indicated. This can't happen like last time. I'll just play it slow and keep gaining power. Cell has been increasingly annoying. Maybe I should get rid of him earlier than planned. Ah, it wasn't a sound of pleasure like it was last time, this time. Her brain was receiving massive waves of pain originating from an unknown spot. What is happening? Intense ringing, like a bell, echoed throughout her mind. She couldn't think and be forced to kneel down in agony. Cell ran into the room and watched by the doorway alerted by the sound. This is the sound of my freedom. I have been working on tearing a spot on your wall ever since you came here years ago, and I have finally broken through. You can't contain me anymore. The voice inside her head made her feel crazier than she actually was. Her body was phasing in and out. It was like she was trying to create afterimages in place. Until eventually, two afterimages materialized into physical constructs, and with a boom in the center, launched each other in different directions embedding their respective walls. Evil 21 was laughing out loud after she inspected her inner body. Virtually no power loss. Even with the power loss, it wasn't dangerous to her, and she would be able to easily get it back after sucking her good counterpart dry. She started talking contemptuously to herself across the aisle as she tried to get out. You've doomed yourself. I couldn't get rid of you when you were in my mind, but now I can eliminate you forever. Such idiocy won't go unpunished. How certain are you that they are in this base? 99.9% .9 certain. Almost at the fabled base of 21 and Cell. They were truly out of nowhere. A deserted desert, if you will. We are here. Here? There is no one here. Just more sand that seems to stretch out for an eternity. Are we sure Bulma didn't knock any screws in your head 16? There is nothing here, unless it's another underground base. I have only seen this reveal itself once before, 
but I have the method of activation stored in my memory. Android 16 moved to a certain cactus, one out of many scattered around, while the rest of the team promptly stepped back when he beckoned to, pushing two of its spines with his fingers at the same time, then a third with his foot. A few seconds passed until a clicking sound could be heard. Normally, someone without the correct pressure would have the spine pierced through, or the spine would break from the pressure. The cactus hissed and the back part of it opened up and shot a light screen as if it was a projector. This light scanned the area in front of it a few times before it shot its light slowly, revealing a medium-sized structure from its invisibility. The building had a force field-like structure, surrounding it shedding its cyan light dimly on the surroundings. What? Didn't we come from that way? How did we not run into the building? What 18 said was what was on the other two guys' minds as well. From what I know, this force field is the cause of such a phenomenon. It covertly distorts your perception, forcing you to go around the building without you noticing. Looks like it even worked on you, Goku. Technology from the future is unpredictable. Yeah, that is kind of scary. Whatever, can you disable it? Of course. Next to the projector lens was a small button which 16 pressed. The building was scanned once again, but this time, the force field disappeared from the top to bottom. Hey! Great, what are you two doing here? Dad, did you really think you could have fun without us? What a big meanie. Goku rolled his eyes as Bulla and Gohan landed next to him. Truly, he instilled the Goku mindset onto the next generation. Just as they were flying above the building, however, the glass on the top broke and a figure launched towards two flying scions. They all crashed into each other, but since the loan's figure speed was much higher, they went in that direction and landed on a bunch of cactus. You would think this would hurt more, but we are scions. From inside the building, you can hear maniacal laughter. Weak. I expected nothing less. Hmm. Wait. Wait what? Rising from inside the lab, a pink figure with white hair levitated above it shocked at her surroundings. What happened to the force field? How are you outside? W what? She didn't really think that throwing her counterpart outside would do anything. At worst, she would slam into the force field, leaving the outside world oblivious to the beating. That is when she saw Goku and the androids and her top blew off. You traitors. I no wonder. This time I will personally tear you all apart and rebuild you to my own image. I won't let that happen. Rising from the dust of where she was launched from the lab, Good 21 stood up. We were badly beaten up in no condition to fight, but the determination and will to fight never left her eyes. The good version of 21, well that was easy. Don't worry, uh, 21, I will take care of her. Normal Super Scion wasn't enough. That much was evident from when Evil 21 fought Kale. He needed one step further. Luckily, he was one step further. Oh! Powering up his Super Scion transformation to the max, his hair started to stand on end, as if it were shocked from the inside out. If you took into account the lighting surrounding him, you can say he ascended into a true Super Scion. 100 times stronger than his base form, he launched towards 21 in the air. You think that I don't have anything more? Rolling her sleeve in the literal sense, there was a little control panel there. Pressing a few buttons, a signal was transferred invisibly. Android 17 and 18's eyes light up red, without their doing and their bodies launched up to meet Goku. At the combo attack of the two androids, he had to back off unsure how to proceed. He didn't want to damage them until he figured out what was going on. After landing, the two androids flew up beside 21. Hmph. It seems you removed my programming inside 16, or I would have overwritten him as well. No matter, Cell should be powerful enough. Cell. As if waiting for his signal, Cell burst through the front door at top speed, surprising 16 who was in his path. Goku who saw Cell, and was able to react in time was stopped in his tracks to helping 16, when a pair of kicks was about to smash into his face. He didn't have time to appreciate the shoes, and had to narrowly dodge them, and the other set that was behind him that he sensed. 17, 18, snap out of it. I thought you hated her. This is quite interesting. My mind thinks freely, but only my body is controlled. Yeah, such a surreal experience. And it's not like we hate her. We only choose the side who is going to win. It seems like you aren't in a favorable position. How can you know my position if you don't know all my cards yet? The two androids kept their coordinated assault, even when talking to Goku. I, I have to help Urk. The good 21 tried to stand up, but her injuries were too great, and she fell back down on one knee. Now where did we leave off? Goku looked over to the side helplessly. He had to power through the androids and potentially do serious damage in hopes that they would get repaired by Bulma. What Goku knew, however, was that when unable to control their body and controlled by another person, they might keep fighting until they are dead. I can't wait to break you. 21 have me the go ahead, but honestly, even if she didn't, I would have anyway. I never liked you and your robotic nature. I wonder, even still, do you scream for mercy? I have diagnosed you as a psychopath, however. You probably already knew that. 
Meanwhile, 16 and Cell were having an interesting conversation. Wait the kids. Weren't they with 21? They could try what I taught them, but I don't know if they are going to be able to do it. Wait, where are they? Goku looked over to where all three of them crashed. He didn't see a sight of his kids in the carnage. A little too late, the ground underneath where the androids and Goku were fighting shook. The ground broke underneath them, and coming out of it like moles were his two kids. Their fist was in the air for an uppercut. Just when he thought they were good for something, it was actually his face that got punched. What was that for? You idiot. That was dad. Oh, oops, he he. Dad, it was a mistake. Please don't ground me. The two children uppercut the two males, while 18 just retreated back to stay with 17. They dug all the way they're concealing their key for the perfect, not so perfect surprise attack. Dad, we will stall 17 and 18. We will show them we are the better tag team. Besides, we have been practicing the technique you taught us. We got this. Goku nodded his head, a little proud at those two little brats. Although the uppercut still stung a bit. Flying over, he launched another fist at the flying 21. She was annoying, about to decimate her other self was interrupted again. Can't she have some fun and just kill herself, or did people had to stop her? You are from the future, correct? You may think you know all my tricks, but I assure you that you will still be surprised. What from your ape form? That form is useless, inferior to even the first Super Scion transformation. Just turn into my snack already, and let me walk over the corpses of the people on this planet. You already know my answer. Less talk, more of my fist in your face.